Hello everyone, Jerry from the West Lincoln Library here again for our next STEAM project. Today we are going to be talking about, can you guess, volcanoes. And I have this, here's a model I built and I'm going to teach you a little later how you can make your own. Uh, and it's very simple and very cool. Then, when, I'm going to take this outside and blow it up. So it's going to be, And I'm going to teach you how you can blow up yours too. So it's going to be lots of fun. Okay, so before we talk about volcanoes and how they're formed, we have to talk about what the Earth is made up of. And if you see my chart at the top, that's the four main layers of the Earth. And at the very center of our Earth, 6,371 kilometers down, we have an inner core. It's called the inner core, and it's a solid iron and nickel mass, like a big ball of steel. Okay, and then 5,155 kilometers down, we, it's a lot hotter, and this is called the outer core. And this is liquid rock with metals in it too. There's iron and, and, and um, uh, nickel also. Okay? And then 2,900 kilometers down, we have what we call the mantle. And this are, these are solid plates of rock that, that float on top of the, the uh, liquid, the liquid rock. Okay? And then if we go up between 6 kilometers down and 35 kilometers down, that's the, that's, that's the mantle. That's, that's the place. Okay? And then from 6 to 35 kilometers down, that's our soil base. That's the rocks in the soil that's built up. And they call that the oceanic crust, the Earth's crust. Okay? Now, if you see down here, on this map, I have all the, the, the major plates of the world marked out. And these plates are, are floating on top of the magma, on the, the liquid rock. And sometimes they hit and they rub against each other. And that's how we get earthquakes, right? Just imagine two huge slabs of rock coming together and smashing together and rubbing. It causes everything to vibrate. And, and, and this can also cause volcanoes because what happens if one plate slips on top of the other, it comes up through the crust and it forms the, the volcano shape, you know, the, the, the cone. And, and when that happens, it weakens, it weakens the, uh, the, the mantle, okay? And it and, and creates gaps in the mantle where this hot liquid, this hot liquid, hot rock, liquid rock and iron can escape up into the earth. And it's called magma. This, this liquid, uh, liquid rock. When it comes out of the volcano, it's called lava. Um, and it usually moves very slow. And we've all seen, probably on TV, lava flows, right? Red, liquid rock, slowly coming down the mountain, burning everything and covering everything in its path. Um, but sometimes, when... The gap kind of seals over, hardens up. It's still fairly weak. It's not too thick. And gases can build up. And that's when volcanoes erupt and explode. Okay? And that's called a pyroclastic flow. Okay? That's the explosion. And that puts out tons and tons of dust, hot ash, throws rocks and lava out. Um, it's very dangerous. The, the ash alone is such a, makes such a big cloud that it says, that they say, that scientists say that it can actually cool, it actually cools the earth one to two degrees because it blocks the sun and that could harm crops. Uh, it, it, it's bad for your lungs to breathe it in and it's a hazard to uh, planes flying. It's fairly dangerous. Okay. Um... And of course, the explosion, if you're anywhere near the explosion, you, you know, the explosion can send ash and hot lava 
for kilometers and kilometers around. Also, when it blows up, the force, the wind it makes, the, yeah, the force, uh, it's like hurricane winds. It'll, it'll knock down whole forests. Okay? And then the last hazard is, after, is the lava flow, which is slow. Most people can uh, get away from it, but it, it can destroy houses. Uh, there is one benefit to the lava flow. It brings new nutrients and soil from the middle of the earth and helps new plants to grow. Okay? So, now that we learned a little bit about volcanoes, we're going, I'm going to show you how to build one, light, mine here, very easy. And then I will take mine, like I said, to, blow, to go blow up. Right now I want to remind you that today, September 25th, you can pick up and order your steam kits for our next project, which is going to be a sound project. And you get and it's called Sensational Speakers. So, and uh, the video for that will be released October 9th. So, uh, so as of today, please order your kits, uh, limited quantities. So, uh, order them quick. All right, let's get to making this volcano. All right, everyone. All we need to make our volcano is something flat and stiff, a piece of cardboard or a piece of wood for your base. And you're gonna need a bottle with some. I need the water to make our paper mache because this is basically a paper mache. So we have a plastic bottle we will put in the center. And then you're gonna get some tape. And I like to use this painter's tape because it peels off easy, it rips easy. And you don't have to be fancy, this part. Just tape the bottle so it doesn't move. And this is all going to be covered with the paper mache. Okay, so just like that. So you have tape all the way around. Now we're going to start building the volcano. And this is, you're just going to take some newspaper, make some balls, and you're going to put it around and tape. You're going to make the base of the volcano. Okay, and like I said, this part doesn't have to look pretty because we're going to cover it with paper mache. Okay, so that's one piece. Good idea to tape it to the bottle too, so it keeps it together. Another piece here.
And then for the next layer, I have to just get one piece and kind of make a kind of a snake out of it. And we have to go smaller as we go up to make the cone shape. And remember, volcanoes aren't perfectly cone-shaped. There's a lot of rocky crags and different shapes to them. That's pretty good. And then we put one here. Just want to squeeze it a bit. Make sure it fits okay. Kind of look like a volcano. Let's tape it down so it doesn't move too much. Okay, now comes the real fun part, paper mache. And my recipe is very simple. I have flour and water. And a tip for the parents, if uh, you want to, your kids want to keep these around for a while, or if they're using them for a science project, add a little salt to the flour. That way, because it is a food, it will start to go moldy. But the salt will take care of that. All right, so I have our flour and water in a bowl, okay, and you want to mix it up. I'll mix it up with my hands, and you want it like um, pancake batter. You want it thick, but not too thick and not too watery. <laughs> Just a nice consistency that you can play with. And if you've, if you've never done paper mache before, this is fun. You can get messy. Okay. So there we go. And now all you do is you get, you rip up some pieces of paper, of uh, newspaper, and you start covering. Cover it with your glue, your paper mache, and start layering it around. Like so. Okay, and just make sure you don't cover the, the opening <laughs> of your bottle. And that's about it. You, like I said, you want you may want to let this dry for ten minutes or so, and then you can you can put a second layer on so it's a little stiffer. Okay. Ooh, mine stuck to my paper. See, that's it. And now you can, once it dries, you gotta. I left mine for maybe three hours before it was still a little damp, but it was okay to paint. I painted mine. Um, I made a little backdrop. I, I bought some cheap animals at the dollar store, some dinosaurs, and I stole some of my mom's uh, fake plants <laughs> to use as trees. And, and that's it. And if you don't have paint, another good idea is I, I, I get some extra paste in your hand and rub it on the outside. And then go outside and get some dirt. And you can put the dirt on top, it'll stick, and then dry, then it'll actually really look like a volcano, and you can put little rocks. Okay? Now I'm going to take mine outside now, and show you how to, um, to set it off. And basically we're just going to use cola and mentos. Okay? And a tip for the parents, if you want to make uh, the cleanup a little easier, um, use diet soda. That way there's no sugar and it's less sticky. All right, so we're gonna go shoot. We're gonna go uh, explode my volcano now, and just remember to, uh, as of today, you can order your steam kits for our next project, uh, and the video will be released October 9th.
So I'll see you outside. See if we can get this volcano to spew. Now I said we were gonna use uh, cola and um, mentos. However, I tried it and it didn't really work too well. Maybe the, the soda I had was a little flat. So what, I do, what I've done now, there's so many recipes you can find online. I'm, I'm, I've used um, baking soda and pop. And we're going to see if we can get some lava to flow. Okay, so I'm going to start pouring it. Let's see, let's see what's going to happen. Got a pretty big bottle here, so it's going to take a while to fill. There we go. There we go. Actually, if you use vinegar, it would be a lot, a lot better, but you can see. There you go. And you can see the lava flowing down. You can add some ketchup too to really have uh, the color of lava. But there you go. And you know what? Let's see if I've got a Mentos here, if it'll do anything. Ooh, I might have got the wrong Mentos. But that's the gist of it. Easy to make, easy to decorate. It looks really cool. And you can just have fun pouring things in and see what uh, splurts out. Vinegar would work really well. It's still bubbling a bit. Oh, that looks cool. <laughs> Actually, if you had some food coloring too, it'd look really cool. You can just keep doing that. You can add some more baking soda. Let's see what happens. There we go. Look at now it it's running. Well, that's it for this week. Make sure you pick up your steam kits for the next project, and I'll see you again soon. Bye.